Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. It's been three or four months that I've been working on this topic and finally I have the time and also the opportunity to work on this project. So as you can see, on your right you see this acrylic box which I made, um, which I glued together, which I laser cut, also made a nice MSI logo in front. Then I have another laptop on the left, which is my working laptop, it's a Lenovo X1, which I'm using to capture this laptop, which is an MSI GS65, so it's a 15 inch gaming laptop with an i7-8750H CPU, so it's a 6 core CPU, very similar to an 8700K, with the difference of course that this CPU cannot consume as much power as an 8700K, which makes absolute sense because we have only very limited cooling capabilities in such a thin laptop, so the typical power consumption of this CPU is something between 20 and 30 watt. That's why the power target is a lot lower and um, the expected clocks are usually something around 3 to maximum 4 gigahertz. And the GPU in here is a GTX 1060, it's a QMAX design from Nvidia. So, I mean, power wise, looking at the space of the laptop, it's very powerful and it's also very quick. Working on it feels like working on a desktop unit, which is something I really like. But unfortunately, of course, you're still limited in cooling capabilities if you want to overclock a machine like this. Overclocking, of course, is also not really possible because it's an 8750H. I originally wanted to have an HK CPU, which is um, with an unlocked multiplier because of the K suffix, but the K suffix CPU, so the 8750 HK, I think it's called, is only available in very thick and very huge laptops. And unfortunately, it doesn't fit in my box, which we need later for our special, special cooling solution. So I had to stick to this one. Uh, it's not really a problem because we can just jump into my screen now. You can see CPU-Z open with the 8750H running currently at something like 3.9 gigahertz. You can see the maximum turbo clock is 41 written in here. And if we just perform a Cinebench run, I already performed one for you. So you can see the single core speed is 173 Cinebench points, which is really a lot for a, for a laptop, it's really quick. It's very similar to the performance of a Ryzen 7 1800X or of a Ryzen 7 2700X. I think the single core performance is very similar. Only a desktop CPU like 8700K when it's heavily overclocked or 9900K, something like this can compete with this single core performance and I think 8700K must have something like above 200 points. Of course, that's superior to it. The multi-threading performance obviously is li limited by the cooling capability. So if we just run this and take a look into core temp, you can see the core temperature of one core immediately hits 90 degrees Celsius, which makes perfect sense. We have a very thin laptop with uh, limited cooling capabilities. So once the CPU hits 90 degrees Celsius, which, which seems to be the temperature target of this laptop, it will start to clock down the CPU, clock down, uh, not clock down, but lower the voltage. So it stays within the temperature target and also within the power target. Power consumption now seems to be 31 watts. So I guess that's the power limit of this CPU. And now you can see the score is 855. Previously it was something around 900. Obviously depends how warm the laptop already is, how many runs you performed before that, and also what kind of applications are running in the background. Currently I'm running XTU in the background, which gives us some kind of control over the laptop. Obviously, as I said, we cannot overclock the CPU, so we cannot touch the multiplier. But what we can do is adjust the voltage, the core voltage, which gives us up to plus one volt offset, which is obviously way too much. Then we can adjust, for example, the current, um, the ICC max, then we can just adjust the AVX ratio offset, which is not necessary in our case. What is even more important and more interesting is the turbo boost settings. So turbo boost is limited to 90 watt here currently, turbo boost power max is 45 watt and the time window is 28 seconds. So we can theoretically increase the turbo, but the problem is if we increase that, CPU consumes more power, gets warmer, runs again into the temperature limit, clocks down. So at this point, the CPU is perfectly balanced, I would say, because it adjusts itself to the maximum temperature limit. So there's not much we can optimize from here unless we do undervolting for the CPU, which helps a little bit to save power consumption. Therefore, the CPU can clock higher. If we scroll down next to you, we can see the multiplier table, which I think is really interesting. So the one core turbo limit and the two core turbo limit is 41 and the six core turbo limit is 39. So 
actually the CPU can clock up to 39 multiplier while running Cinebench, but when we perform a Cinebench run here, the multi-threading run, you can directly see the CPU clocks down from 37 multiplier or 38 to 27, 26, 28, something like this in this direction, because obviously it's hitting the power limit and the temperature limit, so the CPU cannot clock much higher. For 3D performance, we have a GTX 1060 in here, as I already said, and I already performed a superposition benchmark run, which is 2000 points, roughly at 1080p extreme setting, because I think 1080p makes most sense on this laptop, maybe even 720p, depending on what kind of game you want to play to have the max um, FPS, obviously. If we take a look at the GPU temperature, we can see the minimum was 48 degrees Celsius, while the maximum was 81 degrees Celsius under load during the benchmark. And again, for the GPU, we can overclock it. We can overclock it using MSI Afterburner, but because it's already running into the power limit, it's already clocking down under load because it's hitting the temperature limit so early. That's why we cannot adjust much at this point. And what I want to try in this video is actually, can we submerge a laptop in 3M Novak? A lot of you asked for this video. A lot of people asked me, for example, at Gamescom came up to me and I said, hey, can we not just submerge a whole system in there and maybe a laptop and see what happens? I was always interested in doing that because I'm not really sure what happens. Nothing should happen, I think. There are some parts that can be damaged. For example, a speaker could maybe be damaged or the fan that's responsible for CPU cooling. And the battery, of course, will also be interesting. I think the battery should not be a problem as long as we just use a normal Nobeck fluid. We will do something even more special later and then we will see if we damage something or not, but let's see how high we can push the CPU and the GPU adding some 3M Novik fluid on this laptop. Okay, so it's filled with Novak, so we have about three to four centimeters in here, I would say, of Novak. So it's basically Novak 7100. It's the one with 61 degrees Celsius boiling point and temperatures look really interesting already. So if we look at the core temp, we have a core temperature on all cores, something between 30 and 40 degrees. So we already dropped it by 10 degrees. What you have to keep in mind is that the Novak will now slowly heat up until it reaches 61 degrees Celsius, then it will stay stable at this point and it will just evaporate at the points where it's getting even warmer. So for example, at a GPU or a CPU, that's the point where it would start to evaporate and do the cooling. So let's just rerun Cinebench, check what it is. Previously, we had 850 points roughly, sometimes up to 900 points depending on what kind of load was applied previously, if the laptop was already hot or not. So let's see what the performance looks like now when we just run Novik. But I can already see if I check, yeah, if I check the clock in CPU-Z, it's already higher. So we have 3.2, 3.3 gigahertz. So that's already looking promising. It's already 300, 400 megahertz improvement just by adding some fluid on the laptop. Yeah, 1000 points, it's really solid. So 150 points roughly by just adding some Novak without touching any f uh, settings in um, XDU. That's really interesting. So I guess we will now use XDU and do some adjustments. I think I will just max out the turbo for now because I mean, that should be the limiting factor for the start. So we just max it out completely and see what happens. Should not be that much more limited now by the cooling performance so let's rerun and see oh yeah cpu is getting much warmer it's also consuming more power so we now have 47 watt previously it was 32 watt max if we check the clocks it's now 
3.3 peak, I would say. It's not that much higher from keeping the turbo stock, but we can also see that the CPU is still hitting temperature limit at one CPU, so still 90 degrees Celsius on one core. I thought it would be lower than that. I expected more from the Novik. Okay, so no gain, increasing the turbo limit. That's pretty unexpected, I would say. Let's lower the CPU core voltage, maybe by 100 millivolt. See if that helps anything. Because it should reduce the CPU power consumption, therefore uh, reduce the CPU core temperature and allow higher frequency. Oh yeah, you can see it boosts like 3.4, 3.5. That's a solid improvement now. By the way, I tried that before without Novak um, under volting and it helped like 100 or 200 uh, megahertz. So we went up to 3 gigahertz boost max on all cores. And with Novak now, 500 megahertz improvement. Not even mad. Okay, 1,100 points. Another 10%. Yeah, that's, that's very good. But I think we cannot go much further from this. Maybe the, oh yeah, the Core ICC Max, that should also help, I guess. So another rerun. You can see power consumption is still max 47, 48 watt. It doesn't really go much higher. It's still 90 degrees, 92 degrees maximum on the core number three. So I guess that's the limiting point for now. Even with Novak, it's still hitting 92 degrees. That's more than I expected. Okay, no improvement at this point by just improving the ICC max. So if I check the fluid temperature is 31 degrees Celsius right now and even then we have a core maximum temperature of 92 degrees Celsius. So I think we're pretty much maxed out even with the settings we can do in XTU. I already tried it to go even lower on the core offset. So if I go to minus 150 millivolt offset, it crashes. So CPU needs more voltage, but cannot consume more voltage because we're hitting the temperature limit of 90 degrees Celsius. So not much more we can do. I will actually leave the laptop in here for now for maybe half an hour until the Novak heats up to the boiling point because I simply want to see how it looks like if the GPU and the CPU are evaporating. In the meanwhile, we can also perform a super precision benchmark run quickly and see what the performance here looks like. Previously, we had 1995 points and once we are done with all that, we will bring out some more tools and stronger weapons. So the GPU seems to boost a little bit higher in superposition. So previously it always hit 81 degrees Celsius max, 80 degrees Celsius in superposition. Now it stays at 55 degrees Celsius, which is really solid, I think. And the GPU clock is also a bit higher. So we are now at roughly 1700. Previously it was 1620 during the benchmark. So I think we will see some kind of performance increase. Okay, so we had 2,000 points stock. We still have 2,000 points. Means that CPU, additional CPU power didn't help at all. So it's probably 100% GPU limited. So let's see if we can do something with uh, GPU overclocking. So let's just try what Afterburner can do. If we can increase it by 100 megahertz. Seems to work. If I open the render test, it's now boosting to almost 2,000 uh, megahertz in the render test. Obviously, it will be lower in the units in heaven because it probably is also power limited. And I'm not sure if we can bypass the power limit here. We cannot adjust it in the afterburner, so there's no option here. And I don't really want to do any hardware mods on the laptop, so because it's not mine, I borrowed it from MSI. So fluid temperature 36 degrees Celsius and GPU is really power limited. So I even tried it again with plus 200 megahertz on the GPU. It does not increase the GPU clock higher because we're running into the power limit. We have 2065 points now in superposition benchmark. So there's only a very small gain. We cannot really go higher. We can probably improve the performance by increasing the memory clock, which we won't do for now. Um, I will now wait until the fluid hits 61 degrees Celsius so we can see how it looks like if it boils and what happens to the laptop because idle temperatures, low temperatures should be a lot higher. So we will see what happens then and afterwards we will bring out the dry ice and fill dry ice in here 
That's something I wanted to try for a very long time. Do Novak cooling with dry ice, submerge a full system in the cold fluid. See what happens if we cool it, I don't know, to minus 30, minus 50 degrees Celsius. And then we will try if we can do laptop extreme overclocking.